Happy hello, unstoppable real estate investors. I'm Rayana Starr, your host, hostess in my group, Unstoppable Real Estate Investors. And I have with me, if you haven't met this lovely lady who's just gorgeous and elegant, but also fun to talk to, she's just will blow you away. And Amy Majori and I met in Fortune Builders. And she has um, come a long way from her working in corporate America. And now she's quite a little bit of a celebrity in the real estate investment space as far as her niche is raising private money. And if you haven't got a chance to meet her, definitely join us and reach out to her. She's very approachable, lovable, just good heart, wants to help people. And this is about her journey. I'm going to be interviewing her I, and it will absolutely inspire you. And here's where she's at right now. And I feel very blessed because she's gotten so successful and busy with her rising, raising private money coaching program that she just informed me that I will be the last podcast interview she does for the year. And I said, for 2023 or 2022? And she said, yes. <laughs> So for both, like she's gotten so busy and her goal, and this is what I love about what you said, Amy, Amy's goal is to work less. Now, when you have something that other people really value uh, and, and really need, and you, you want to help people, it's really a juggling act, isn't it, to be able to set healthy boundaries so that you don't have to work so much. So she's getting more selective about where she spends her time. So we're going to hear all about that. Amy, welcome to Unstoppable Real Estate Investors, to how the top 5% do it. And you're definitely a top 5%er. And I just want to um, introduce you and have you share like what, you know, talk about what you were doing before real estate and then how you transitioned into it. And then I might, in, you know, interrupt you here and there just to emphasize something or get clarity on something, but I pretty much want this to be about you sharing your story to inspire others and then really get to where you're at today and what your focus is today. How's that sure. sound? Yeah, sounds great, my lady. Thank you for having me. Okay. I appreciate you. Love you. It's so crazy how far back we go and um, how we are both products of the same, you know, educational company and look at where we are now, which is so cool. So yeah, you know, it's crazy because my background's very traditional, you know, I'm Middle Eastern. So no, I don't, I did not have super strict parents growing up. I share my culture with her because culturally in the Middle East, um, parents hold education, um, at a very high standard for their children. So, like I'm the only one in my family with an MBA, like only an MBA. Everyone else is a doctor, a lawyer, or they have their PhD. So growing up, like only an MBA. And are you Persian or Armenian or Persian? Persian. Yeah. Okay. You know, and so it's like, um, so I went to school, I got average grades and um played sports my whole life. And I only got one job offer out of undergrad. And it was a offer from Dell Computers in Austin, Texas. I was living in Michigan at the time. I didn't even know when I was interviewing. I just took it as like a practice interview. Like, oh, let me brush up on my interview skills. And um, I remember at the end of the interview, and I write about this in my book, the guy interviewing me said, do you have any questions? And I was like, no, I'm good. Thanks. Like, I had no questions. He goes, well, don't you want to know about Austin? I go, Austin, Texas? He goes, yeah, that's where Dell's located. I had no, I did zero research. I had no idea. I don't know how I got an offer, but it was the only one I got. So I had to take it. So at 21, I moved from Michigan to Texas and, you know, at the beginning it was exciting and I loved trying to climb the corporate ladder. Um, my family was very proud, but 14 years into my career at Dell, which was 10 years ago, um, and during those 14 years, I ended up getting my MBA in Austin, Texas, but I was like, I'm over it. I don't care about getting Amazon, their replacement hard drive next business day. Like I was Milton from office space. I was just in the basement collecting a paycheck, doing the bare minimum. If you guys haven't seen that movie, you have to. And so what is it? office space, office space. Oh my God, Rihanna, you've never seen that movie. No, 
please watch it tonight, then text me. I will. I will <laughs> watch it with will. you. All right. Why is a, that your favorite movie? It's so I am a sucker for movies from the 90s. I think it was in the early 90s. It was actually filmed here in Austin. But um, those of you who have corporate jobs or those of you who have worked in a cubicle setting will get it. So it's you gotta watch it. But anyway, so yeah, so 10 years ago, you know, I heard this ad on the radio and I was always obsessed with HGTV, which I still can't believe I signed a contract with them. So I like the idea of flipping houses, but I never ever thought about leaving corporate America. Like I thought. 10 years ago, my dream job was with Nike in Portland, Oregon. So I'm trying to get this job with Nike and I'm actually getting ready to fly out there for a second interview. And I hear this out on the radio and I'm like, oh, learn how to flip houses. Okay, sure. And so I ended up investing in a coaching program. And for me though, it wasn't to quit my job in corporate America. It was just to make some money on the side. Was to that really- fortune builders? Yeah, it was with fortune builders yeah. Yeah. Um, to just blow my money on some material, like stupid materialistic things. Right. But this is what was so crazy. This was in late 2013. Um, I, I invested in the coaching program and I didn't really start till January of 2014. So not even 10 years ago, you guys. And because of my ability to raise private money, I didn't even know that was a skill that I had, but I'm working this full-time job at Dell. I invested into this coaching program. I knew nothing about real estate. I was a brand new investor. And then that very first year, I ended up buying, renovating, and selling 10 high-end properties. So all because I could raise money. So then I was like, dang, maybe my dream job is not with Nike. Maybe it's in real estate for two reasons. (laughs) Number one, yes, the money was nice. You know, I'm very transparent about everything, wins, losses, success, and failures. And, you know, I was at Dell for 14 years with an MBA, making $87,000 gross a year. Like I wasn't even making six figures that very first year I invested in real estate with no experience, including a loss I took on a project. I still net over 120. So yeah, sure. I fell in love with the earning potential, but I really did enjoy the renovation process, the transformation process, being able to pick and choose who I want to work with. And so then the rest was history. I quit my job. All right. So pause there because you've got quite a fan base. All right. So Sevelyn Smith, Angel Mercado, Angel sending you roses, Christian Weatherspoon, our buddy from our all of us being at Fortune Builder, she said, work less. I'm curious what specific goal you have around that. Mine is three to four. That is to work three to four hours a day, three to four days a week. So we'll answer that in a minute. Sevelyn saying amazing. Angel saying, Amy, Rayana, boom, love you ladies. Kathy um, Thornburg, a client of mine, two amazing ladies. Yeah, well, we yeah. share a lot of same clients because I've sent you clients and they kind of um, kind yeah. of cycle through. Um, Romelin um, Bangloy Felici- Feliciano, Feliciano. Christian, Office Space is legit, my favorite movie. Watch Party, really good. Yes, so relatable. Yes, so relatable and so true. Michelle said hi. Michelle, Michelle, Angel Mercado, Michelle, um, Angel, what's Michelle's last name again? Um, and Andrew Castine and that, and all that while being on H, an HTV TV star. All right, so you're loved, you have fans, so continue. So you, Madeira, M- Michelle Madeira. Oh, um, Michelle, girl, where you Michelle been? Michelle and Angel, yeah, they're, yeah. they're partners. I, I always thought they were married, but they're actually not officially oh. married, but they kind of are. They're um, hilarious. And Kathy, yeah, they are. New watching. Yorkers. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to call, I'm going to go into coaching mode. Kathy, where have you been, girl? I haven't seen her on her coaching calls. You better get on those Tuesday, Thursday calls. Same with you, Michelle. Love you, ladies. All right. So you want me to continue? Oh, and Steve Paglia just joined us and said, I wish I was younger and had the energy and drive you have. And yeah. So, well, all right. thank you. I don't have energy. I'm the world's biggest procrastinator and I waste so much time. And yesterday, all I did was post about how I don't want to do squats. So thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> I just, yeah, which proves you can be successful and it's knowing how to work smarter, not harder. Yeah. So you, you see the earning potential, you see you're a little corporate slave, but you, and you have this identity wrapped up in working for Nike and just kind of this side thing, get your attention 
and you dive into it and you, you, you're successful right out of the gate in the first year, you make money more than your corporate job. Are you still at your corporate job at that point? Yeah. Are you still serving two masters? Talk about the transition. I was like, I was comfortable quitting my job, Adele, six months into real estate because I had three projects in the under construction and I knew based upon the market, I was going to turn a profit. But because I'm so stubborn and I talk about this very openly, I was like, I'm not leaving after 14 years without a severance package. So I kept asking my VP, I was like, fire me, give me a severance package, lay me off. And he was like, no, we're not doing anymore. So um, I dragged it out for a year. So I actually juggled real estate in Dell for a year and a half. So it was May 29th, 2015 that I had my last day at Dell. But this is what was so funny. I called up my boss and um. And I was like, hey, Roman, I just want to give you, because I was trying to like just milk it for whatever I could. Um, but what did I say? I was I like, mean, you know, wait, one thing I love about you, and I think why you and I have always clicked, is you are just real, authentic, out there, like you said, transparent, direct, tell it like it is. You're just putting it all out there. I freaking love that about you. Thank you. And you guys, <laughs> as I'm milking the system and doing the bare minimum Adele, I got a 1%. <laughs> So I don't know what's happening, but I called up my boss and I was like, oh, this was so funny. I was in the car. We were living, I was living in San Diego. Um, I was dating Sean at the time, living in San Diego and working remotely for Dell. And I remember pulling up to the basketball court. This is so funny. John Steingraber was getting ready to play basketball with Sean and a few other people. And I'm in the car. Sean's your husband now. John's my husband now. Um, Yes, we lived in together before I got married and we're married now. We live in Austin with an amazing girl. But anyways, I called up my boss and I was like, babe, just be really quiet for a second. And I'm like, hey, Roman, I just wanted to call and let you know, like, um, it's just been so busy for me. And I'm going to try, I'm going to try to see how real estate is. And so I want to give you my 12 week notice because I just wanted to. 12 week notice. And he said, I wish I would record it. He was like, oh, okay. And I wasn't doing squat, you guys. Like I'd outsource so much of my job at Dell and my boss didn't even know. I'm very open about this. And he's like, oh, okay, well, you know, normally people give us a two week notice. And I was like, I know, but there is so much that I need to um, train my replacement on that two weeks just isn't going to cut it. Now, some of you may be giving me hate saying that's unethical, whatever you guys. So um, I was like, okay, fine. So we agreed on, I think it was like a four or six week you know, transition time. And so then that was it. But this is what was so crazy. You were having a hard time letting go. I wanted, I just, I wanted to quit, but I had to win somehow. I'm very stubborn. Um, <laughs> what so what do you mean had, you had to win? To I had to get something. Like, I'm oh, like. you wanted to leave with getting something. Yeah, so, like if I'm not uh, getting a severance package and I'm going to milk the system for as long as I can collect my 1% raise. I mean, even when I buy furniture, like I'm not getting furniture unless you I get- You want a deal. I want a deal. I'm like, the same I way. I want a deal. Because yeah. is it because you want a deal or because you like to negotiate and get something? No, I have a very frugal side. I like deals. But yeah. also that's what I did at Dell. I negotiated contracts at Dell. So- See, I, it's both for me too. I like to get a deal. I want the value- and I, and, and I think living down in Mexico for a few years, even encouraged this more me. I like to negotiate. I love that. I love negotiating. I like wheeling and dealing. Yeah. yeah. Keep so, going. Uh, so yeah, so that was it. So then I've been, I was a full-time investor since 2015, but even still, like, I never thought I would be where I am today. Um, and again, earlier, Rihanna, you were like praising me for being so successful and doing all these amazing things. Like you guys, I have made a bunch of money. I've lost it all. Um, I posted about this recently. Yeah, I want you to slow down and yeah. talk about that. I want you to dig in a little bit because this speaks to integrity Yeah, and it speaks to the importance of a mentor, JD, and talk. And, and I, I want these podcasts to reflect reality and that the struggle is real. So she she crushes it the first 18 months she's in the business, and then she gets cocky. Her niche in Chicago was condos, and you got greedy, right? Remember? Yeah, I really, yeah, and I got, I got greedy because I wanted to go from making 300000 a year to a million. Um, so talk I, about that 
that yeah go yeah I, don't know that. That I was ambitious um I was driven I remember me and my accountability team set a goal of who can net a million dollars first but I still followed my proven system right that fortune builders gave me well kind of so here's what happened so it was like late 20 no it was really early 2016 um I think I don't remember you guys late 2015 early 2016 so I was like okay I have a contractor I love I was very confident in analyzing deals I knew how to raise money so why not go from condos and I did a couple of really small single family homes into the luxury market in this pocket in the north side of Chicago that no investor had tapped into because they didn't know how to raise money like seasoned investors and builders like we're not going into this pocket because to buy distressed property it was like six or seven hundred thousand right then you got to put four or five hundred thousand into it and they didn't know how to raise the capital so I was like okay so I just started scooping up all these properties and of course everyone started to follow me which was a part of the problem um but <laughs> you know I used to say my mistake was I ended up buying 10 1.2 to 1.4 million dollar properties um within a three mile radius within a six month time frame I used to say that was um, my first mistake. I don't think that was the mistake. What ha I, I believe the mistake was I'm starting to see these like $150,000 profits, $200,000 projected profits, right? On my deal analyzer. So I did start to deviate from the system. So what my coaches and mentors taught me is don't do a deal unless you're netting, you know, 10 to 15%. And I'm doing these deals netting a six to 7% ROI because I'm looking at the dollar amount, like, oh, I'm going to make 200. So I'll make, I'll take a six or 7% return and still make a hundred. But I was too naive to realize that on a $1.4 million property, one change order can wipe out half of those projected profits. So I grew too fast, too quickly. My contractor couldn't handle all the work. I ended up hiring a second contractor who ended up being terrible. I could have maybe vetted him a little bit better. He was just terrible um, because I'm stubborn. I spent $35,000, took him to court, got a judgment for $400,000. Um, I can't collect from it still to this day because all he did was dissolve his LLC and I'm not going to put more money into suing him personally. Um, so that was an issue. And then as all the other investors were following me, all of our properties hit the market at the same time. So now we had flooded the high-end market in this three to five block radius and buyers had leverage. We, there were 36 renovated properties within a five block radius from one another. They all look the same. So now buyers are giving all of us low ball offers and we had to take them. It's in the middle of winter. So it was like the perfect storm, right? It was nothing like intentional. Um, and so, yeah, oh. like I had to fire sale, um, you know, I, 2017 was the worst year of my life, hands down, personally and professionally. You can read about this more on my Instagram page, but um, every day I would cry. Um, every day I just kept my head down, focused on problem solving. Every month I considered filing for bankruptcy because the 1.4 million, it wasn't like, oh, LLC money. That was my money. I had to drain my retirement account from Dell, which I still am trying to pay back. Um, I had to sell all my assets to pay back my private money lenders. And that was just a part of their principle. I had to shift my investment strategy and I went back to the low to middle income price points. I started brokering deals, hustling to make money. Um, yeah, I had to wasn't there a point though, where you considered not paying them back, filing bankruptcy and yeah, every talk about your mentorship with JD, J, JD Azizan, a Sajan. And how he is was the catalyst for you not doing that. Talk a little bit about yeah, I mean, I of that relationship. I, I I think this was so long ago. I called up JD and I and I was like, hey, like you know, what do I do? I've got all this debt, and he was like, um, change your strategy. Like you got this. You know how to do this. And like Amy, I can't tell you what to do. You have to decide ethically what is right for you. Um, and I'll always say what he said, like, once you know how to make money in real estate, it's easy. Right. And so even though it sucked and I got engaged and I had to plan a wedding, um, I love JD. I trust and value his opinion. So I just kept hustling and I kept taking more losses. They were smaller losses. Um, one private money lender who's just money, like he's just a multimillionaire. He just forgave my loan. Um, 
and we're still cool. But this is what's so crazy though, is, and, and many of them, many of them got back, the majority of them got back their principal. Very few got back 90% of their principal, like no interest. Um, and still till this day, I have less than a handful of people. I'm still paying them back, their principal only. But this is what's so crazy is, and this was what, five, six years ago, everybody, every one of my private money lenders, except for one, maybe two, one and a half to two, was so understanding. I, they would cry with me. They would send me inspirational videos, inspirational quotes, um, you know, and it's like, I have students right now, one called me yesterday. He's like, I'm about to lose 25,000. Do I tell my private money lender? I'm like, yes, you have to proactively communicate. Even if things aren't going as planned, you guys, this is how you continue to retain their trust. You've got to say, we've got an issue, but here's what I'm doing to fix it. Um, yeah, you've yeah. got to be honest about the bad news and not avoid it. Not just yeah. private money lenders, but any creditors, any creditors communication is the key. The very last thing you want to do, because you want to go hide it, your head in a hole yeah. and you don't want to deal with it. The opposite is what you need to do is just be transparent, let people yeah. know, communicate and creditors, credit card companies, mortgage companies. It's amazing how forgiving people and organizations will be when you're honest and you're not running away from them. And hiding and not avoiding phone calls. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And look, you guys, at the end of the day, our private money lenders made an investment, right? We don't guarantee anything. Even if you sign a personal guarantee, like it's words on paper, go sue me. I have nothing. What are you going to sue me for? Right. Again, being very transparent, but um, at the end of the day, like I didn't have to pay them back. And I bet you some of them will still disagree with me. You know, I did not have to pay them back, but I chose to. I'm still choosing to pay people back their principal only on a payment plan because I know, like, it, I just can't sleep at night knowing that I've lost someone's retirement account, right? Um, I, you know, so whatever. I can give you every excuse. I've heard every excuse, you know, so. And yet what's so cool about that is what you did you bounced back from it fairly quickly. It sucked. Like 2018, you were whole again. And here you are an expert in raising private money. So, so everyone like here she is, she's experienced like the worst you can experience and yet still has their trust and is still going out there and raising money and doing deals and teaching other people how to do it. People who are really successful have mastered failure. They have mastered failure and have been able to be resilient and bounce back from it and persevere. That's what makes you extraordinary. And that's what makes her an expert at teaching you how to raise private money because she knows the, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. She has experienced all of that in the biggest way possible. So continue with yeah. your journey. You bounce but, back from that and um yeah I bounce back from that and I still am you know my the one pen my lender like really just one like total hater maybe watching but um he called me up one day when he heard that I launched a coaching program or he emailed me I called him and he refused to return my phone call and so he emailed me and said um I cannot believe that you are coaching other investors on how to raise private money. Like, and I, I owe, like, he let me like, I don't even 150,000 or 117,000. Like I may be still today owe him 10 grand. I don't know. I don't care. He's on the bottom of my list and I'm putting it out there. So he, and I'm like, I'm sorry, sir. But you've paid off. You've paid him back all the, the over 90%. And yeah. And like, look, chill. I don't know what, Teaching people how to raise money has to do with me taking a loss on your project. Like that, these are two separate things. I'm good at raising money just because a deal went south and you had to go on a payment plan and only collect 90% of your interest. It doesn't mean I can't inspire and teach other people how to raise money to go grow and scale their business. Um, so just so you know, I, I love this, love this. People hear this, this right here 
is what stops so many of you from getting in the game, from taking action, from going for it. You, she survived. She survived. So we're, you know, she survived and it made her stronger. It made her better. So continue with your journey. So you're recovering from that. You bounce back. And I'm still bouncing back. And yeah, so then, you know, and it was like, um, I was just hustling really for two years. I mean, I think I didn't realize looking back, I was probably like in some sort of a depression in 2017, 18, 19. I'm still trying to flip these middle-income properties in the suburbs of Chicago now. But now instead of taking six-figure losses, I'm taking $20,000 losses. So I pumped the brakes and I, I don't remember, but I don't think I did anything in 2020. Um, I'm doing a little bit of coaching and consulting for other people here, like brokering deals here and there um, to make a little bit of money. Well, then I got pregnant and COVID hit. Um, Sean stopped speaking. Um, he was financially supporting us. So now we like have, and this was just three years ago, you guys, we've got like no money coming in, living in La Jolla, California, um, tied into this very expensive lease. Baby is seven months old now. Um, I'm not working. And so I'm like, forget it. I'm good at raising money. I'm going to start a coaching program and teach other people how to raise capital. And it took, it took me eight years to figure out like, that's what I love. That's what I'm good at. That's what I'm passionate about. And I think that's why I don't feel like I'm working and it's kind of evolved into what it is today. But that was how I was able to start to rebuild only two and a half years ago, you guys continue to pay down my debt um, and, and grow, you know, I have some lofty goals. Like I'll finally this year, I will be like net positive, um, you know, but people see me on these big stages and with these big names and like all over social media. I'm working on it. Like I'm not rolling in the dough. I'm renting a house right now in Austin, Texas, because Sean and I don't think it's financially smart for us to buy a house right now. Like, you know, we have a lot of debt, but we know how to get out of it. Like it's just a matter of changing your strategy, not exiting the game. Well, don't you also think like Amy, I want to just Thank you for being so candid, so authentic, so vulnerable, so real, so truthful. I think this will be one of the best podcast interviews I've ever done that's going to give people so much value because you're showing the struggle is real and you're showing that you still don't have all the answers. You still don't have, you're still not where you want to be. You've had it all. You've lost it all. You're rebuilding. You you know, you're, you're talking about, um, things that are real that stop a lot of people that keep them from taking action because they're afraid. Here you are, you've survived it. What I really get though is your resiliency and your ability to persevere. But even more than that, which is what I think a lot of people struggle with is you and Sean have confidence in your own abilities to hustle, get out there, and turn it around and make money and you have faith in each other and you're playing to your strengths and you've gotten clarity on what it is you really love coaching and raising money and helping other people do that and you're hustling you're out there you're everyone knows you you're getting connected uh, with the big players and everyone loves you and I think that's why because you are so real, you are so authentic, and you are real about your story. And that gives you so much credibility. And I'm, I mean, at the risk of sounding not patronizing, but matronizing is I'm proud of you and impressed. And, and you're a badass girl. Good for you. What else? Tell us more. Um, yeah, I mean, what else? I mean, there's so much. Thank you for that. Um, because I'm sure there are still people who Well, would... we've always had a little connection, but I'm sure you feel that with a lot of people. But that that just that being direct and being yeah, totally, and right. being vulnerable, like we're sisters in that way. And yeah. 
And I've just always gotten a kick out of you. I'm, I've always been impressed by who you are, how you carried yourself at Fortune Builders when you were an immersion teacher. And just even then I remember going to an immersion uh, and watching you tell your stories, telling them what was real. Yeah. And I remember you telling that story. And I just had no idea like how much that impacted you, that that was still that there's still residue from that oh, for you. Yeah. And it makes me respect and appreciate you even more that you're doing the right thing and you're not lying about it and you're doing the best you can and you're showing people and you're so graceful about it. And you're showing people, look, this is where I'm at now. I'm coming out of it. I'm still not where I want to be. I've survived and I still have something of value to share. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, um, so like now, you know, and you guys, we all have fear, like I still have fear. And so where I'm at right now is, yeah, I, I have this coaching program and I teach people all over the country how to raise private money, but I still want to be involved in deals, right? We have our daughter is three and a half now. And so, um, you know, I still do deals, but I'll I'm very selective. Don't start hitting me up and be like, raise money for me. So I'm very selective. I raise money for one person right now. And, um, and so I'm the capital partner and he does all the acquisitions and the construction. And so what, and that way I don't have to worry about managing a team, managing contractors. That's the value I bring to the relationship. And that's the one thing I wish I would have done differently over the last 10 years is why wouldn't I just I loved flipping, but I wish I would have started raising money for other people sooner because it's so freaking easy and you can make such good money just by raising capital and not having to manage a job site or a general contract. And I bet you associating with Pace Morby, you've learned how to even be more capitalize on that more and get more creative and like. Yeah, not just, I mean, not just raising money, but getting a piece of the deal, equity, yeah. different ways to to that you know you can you know be the creative financing aspect of things. Yeah, so, I mean, Chase is amazing. I mean, like I told you before we started, he's like literally changed my life. Like I, my first milestone that was life changing was you know becoming a student and investing in my education at Fortune Builders, and number two was you know, Cody Sperber asking me to speak at his event in April of last year, because that led me to Pace, that led me to Vina, that led me to Chris Crone and so many amazing people who we now collab with. And um, yeah, it's just opened up my, my, my mind and my eyes to a whole new, and I thought I was pretty creative, but a whole new way of establishing partnerships that I'd never really thought of before. Yeah. I mean, there's always more to learn, isn't there? No matter how successful you are, no matter how much experience you have, there's always more you can learn. So tell me a little bit about what your focus is now. Like you're busy. So what are you busy doing? What, what's your passion? What's taking up your time? What is it that you're focused on that's going to give you the leverage to eventually have more free time? I get it. You guys are still working on debt reduction and all that, and you want to get to a certain point. So let's, first, before you answer that first question, where do you and Sean want to be in a year, in three years, in five years? What's what's the ultimate place where you'll feel like, okay, that's behind me. Okay, I've arrived. I'm, Girl, I'm I don't arrived. know. You are the yeah. third person. Chris Noggle and Bill Allen asked me the same question over the last 30 days. You're the third person now. And it's the universe, girl, happens in threes. You guys, I have no... <laughs> I just posted two days ago. I'm a terrible goal setter. I do not have a five-year plan. I have a plan for today. Like, I don't know my passion and what I'm good at and my focus. Um, it's, it's providing more value to my students. It's growing and scaling my private money coaching program. That's it. Second is going to be, I love speaking on a stage. I love being on a stage. I love inspiring other people. I'm very lucky because my topic is very, very niche specific. Nobody, I don't care who you are. You don't teach it the way I teach it. You don't go into the detail the way that I do. You don't make it as easy as I do. So I'm lucky because I have a huge advantage and people need to hear my message. They need to be a part of this community 
if they want to, if they want to grow and scale. Right. So that's where all my time is going into. It's just, I don't know. Do I want to onboard a hundred students this year, a thousand students? I don't know. I'm talking to people out there about partnerships. You know, one guy was like, where do you want to be in five years? Do you want to grow your company and sell? I'm like, I don't know. I'm literally taking it like a day at a time. So, um, but I know it's to raise awareness and show other people because I'm a product of coaching that you can do this. Like if I can do it, you can do it. So that's my focus. So talk about your program. My program is amazing. It's so easy for me to sit here and say that, but um, it's cool. You know, it's like literally. Like you- what's the lengths? What do you cover? And <clears throat> why do people yeah. need it? You know, just your um, little elevator pitch. There's my pitch. And, my yeah, and, and I'll have when, when Rose, my VA posts this, because we'll be posting this in about a hundred real estate investment groups. Oh, cool. And if you send me the link to a landing page or to your offer or whatever, yeah. I'll make sure, sure Rose includes that link in those posts. Okay. But, and, and everybody who's listening right now, <clears throat> some of you are already students of Amy's, but if you're not, and this resonates with you and you resonate with Amy, then listen to what she has to say because it's valuable. And your first deal, the first money you raise will pay for her services and, and, and then so some. So, make it back in five days if you just do what I say. And Sean hates that right. I say that, but I'm like, um, this always happens, you guys. For those of you who want to know more about it, send me a DM on Instagram and say, tell me you were on Rihanna's podcast so that I know where the lead's coming from. But I respond to all my DMs until we can get this link and stuff figured out. But here's my pitch. My program comes with the three C's. The first is the online curriculum, which is a completely done for you um, online training with 90 video tutorials, workbooks, presentations, scripts, um, anything and anything you need to get out there and raise money the right way from the right people. And um, that's all online. It's 10 modules. By the end of module two, you'll start raising money. By the end of module three, you'll be rolling in the dough. In my community, the metric is in 21 days, you can raise as little as six figures if you do what I say, follow the system. Um, the second C is the community. The community is amazing. You guys, this is where I struggle because I'm very protective and selective. Um, I don't allow everyone into the community. Um, it's 260 or 70 people all over the country and we are all like-minded. We do deals together. We got each other's, it's like you and I, Rihanna, that's the entire group. And so I'm scared about mass marketing because I don't want to bring in cold leads. Like Sean and I literally talk to everyone who comes into our group. So you get access to our Facebook group. It's a direct line to me. I don't have a whole, I cannot afford. Yeah, you're building long-term relationships. It's yeah. not about scaling so fast with a bunch of strangers. You yeah. guys want to have control and know the people and have relationships. Yeah, like we just had 20 of them at our house last week. We go, we, you know, we go on vacations together. We, we go to conferences together. So it's cool. It really is. It's like the RPM family. So you get access to our family, our Facebook group. Um, and then the third C is the coaching. So you get live coaching with me. I don't do one-on-ones anymore. So it's every Tuesday and every Thursday, we hop, hop on a one hour Zoom. But this is what's so crazy, you guys, because my online training is so detailed. If you actually do it, lit, like there are literally zero to three questions every week. And we have 60 people on these calls because they just follow the system. So the, the weekly live calls turn into, I bring on guest speakers. Um, we'll do a case study. A student will share, you know, um, a deal or a presentation that they're working on. So those are the three C's. It's a one-time investment of $7,500. You get access for 12 months. And like, I will literally show you how to raise millions of dollars. No, I don't guarantee success. Most people see tremendous results and others don't. I've had people who have come into my coaching program and they're not seeing results, but that's because they haven't even logged into their training. So yeah, they're not action takers. You know, it's like anything else. Um, You can keep be chasing shiny objects and join the next program and the next program. But unless you actually start to take action and implement what you're learning, it's not going to make a difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, that's so like, let me ask. Yeah, go ahead. Go that's ahead. I can help you for those who want help. Yeah. So let me ask you, um, 
what if you were to jump up on a stage or a rooftop and you had a captive audience, knowing what you know now, all the wisdom you've gained through experience, through trial and error, and having coached a lot of people now in raising money and just being a real estate investor, what would your ultimate rooftop message be? That message that if you could shake people to get them to get something, like really get it in their bones, yeah. what would your rooftop message be? It would just be you guys don't allow fear to hold you back. And a lot of people don't even think about raising money because they don't even have an investment strategy. You don't need an investment strategy. If I could do this all over again, I would just focus on raising money because then everyone needs money. Then you can be selective with who you choose to partner with and what deals you want to be a part of. So you guys, if you have someone holding your hand every step of the way, Forget about asking friends and family members for money. You don't need to. I'm going to show you how to go raise money from people at church, people in your Ubers, people at airports. Like, and that's how I started because I didn't have a supportive family. Yeah, it's funny. You know, I was, I joined this um, co-working because I worked from home and I was starting to get COVID cabin fever and I needed to be around people. Found this cool place called Mojo Co-working in downtown Asheville. And just to, just to be around people. And it, it totally worked because I've only gone you know, I only joined a week or two ago and um, there's a lot of real estate related people in there. And so I thought, yeah, this is a good spot for me. And there's this guy who's a, a GC developer and works for a big developer that under their roof, they have the, the developing, the design, the construction and the property management. And he's in a satellite office in Asheville. So we, we connect and then later we just get so we're so simpatico in what we're focused on, the kind of projects we're focused on, that we just geeked out for like an hour and a half. The whole office is gone. The lights are turned off. We're still sitting there. And it was micro communities, like building a micro community in your own backyard and, and then tiny house villages. And that those are an idea whose time has come for sustainability, for affordability, it's being at the source of creating the inventory. And, you know, Asheville's very, very like Austin, very like Portland or Seattle. It's got that kind of cool vibe to it. And we were just clicking it. One connection connected me to everything I'm going to need for real estate in, in Asheville. And actually, we need to go because I'm meeting with my realtor to look at a bunch of properties today to possibly buy one that we're going to transform into a little micro community. We've got to make sure the zoning is right, or we'll rehab the house that's on the property and add maybe four or five tiny houses and yeah. do these little micro communities. So I may be talking to you about getting into your program. I love uh, it. Yeah, yeah. And plus, it sounds like a community I'd just love to be a part of, if you and Sean approve. <laughs> Christian is saying, from what Amy teaches, I used it. My wife's um, OB is ready to fund. And this was just last week in Phoenix. Got to take action. Thanks for saying that, Christian, because this guy I met yesterday, he said his, he was at his doctor's office and his doctor said, dude, do you have anything I can invest in? Um, and this guy wants to work with me because I'm like, he doesn't think like a real estate investor. He yeah. thinks like a contractor and a developer. And I said, dude, I have so many resources for you and so many people I've got to plug you into. And he wants to do the same for me because I have a lot of projects that I, I, I need contractors and subcontractors that I want to work on. And so I just thought it was really cool. And I said, dude, oh my God, I, you need, yeah, here's a guy who you, you're probably, and he's saying, I just need capital i need money i said dude you're swimming in it you just don't see it yet you know it's everywhere you guys the minute you leave your house everyone you encounter is a prospective private money lender right so how do we open up the conversation yeah it's just getting comfortable and not being attached to the end result just being willing to put it out there and the more you do the more comfortable you get and the more you're gonna be a magnet for people coming up to you saying hey you know i heard you raise money right yeah, absolutely. Yep. It all starts okay. with the power pitch. So 
your power pitch. So look, if you guys are struggling or maybe you're using that you don't have money as an excuse to not get out there and make offers and, and get deals, you need to talk to Amy. She, it's a community. You're, you're, you're a lifetime member in her community. She's very generous with what she has to offer and fun to work with. So Amy, I just want to say thank you so much. Anything you want to say in passing um, before we wrap up? No, I appreciate you. I always enjoy our time together. So, you know, thank you for the opportunity to just share my story and hopefully inspire, you know, your audience and whatever I can do to help you um, or your network, please let me know. I will. Thanks, love. I appreciate you and you taking the time to have this last podcast, um, you know, showing with me. Have, and I hope 2023 is an incredible year for you. Thank you. You too, Rihanna. We'll talk soon. Everybody's saying goodbye. Hello, rock star. You'll have to go on in my group and look at all the comments. People love I will. You. All right, honey. Take care. Bye, everyone. Take action. No excuses, just results. Bye now.